How's it going everybody? Welcome to another video. It is Monday, September 18th. It's a little after 10.30 in the morning. We're down here at the cattle farm, down at the feedlot. We just got done moving a whole bunch of bales. We stacked up a whole bunch of bales that we're gonna be grinding up for feed. And uh, we had to bring a calf into the barn. He has a bad leg. So uh, we have him in the barn and we're gonna have a vet come out and take a look at him. We hope it's not a shoulder injury. We think it's below the knee though because that's where all the swelling is, is below the knee. So we're hoping that this calf will be all right. But uh, dad is switching the bucket over to the on the skid loader. I am gonna be hopping in the 4430 and the manure spreader, which uh, this is the video in the last video where we also finished our racing season. I just kind of hopped in this thing and kind of drove it on the spot. So we're gonna do it again today. First thing I gotta do though, is I gotta raise up my three point. My three point is down. My three point is down, so I wanna raise it up so I'm not hitting my PTO shaft. Let everything kick on. Woohoo! Yes, sir. Rev her up just a little bit. Yeah! <laughs> That's how you know she's going. Now I gotta figure out which one's my three point lever. I believe that should be this guy, right? No? Um, maybe it's this guy? Oh, nope, that's my back door for the manure spreader. Shut that. What's this one? That's not it. So then it must be, it has to be this one then. Yeah, here it goes. Okay, three points up. Okay. Steering wheel, come on down. All right, my three points up. I'm gonna put in my clutch. I'm gonna put it in, I'll do, I'll do B and I'm in, I'll do one, I'll do one R for reverse. I'll turn my wheels, you know, I'll back up just a little bit. I'll kind of back up so I don't jackknife near as hard. There we go. And my clutch and my brakes. Then I'll put it in two. Then I'll let off my clutch again. You know what? I have a better idea. Put it back in reverse. I wanna go around the wood chip pile. I'll back up just a little bit more here. There. Now I'll put it in two. Now I'll go forward here. I'll kind of go around the menu of the wood chip pile here. So I'm in the 4430 once again, pulling the manure spreader. We're gonna make a nice wide turn so we don't jackknife. And we are good. So I'm gonna get this thing down there. Dad's already waiting for me to uh, get down there and open the gate for him. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing down there and we'll see what happens here. All right guys, uh, Scott just took off with the 4430 and the first load of manure. Dad is starting to grab a whole bunch more and add it to the pile that we're gonna be clearing out. But I figured I would go ahead and bring you guys in here and show you guys the cast that we brought in. This is an older calf. Will you get up, buddy? Yeah. And you can see he's not putting any weight on that front right leg. And you can see it is really, really swollen from the knee down. So we're hoping it's just an injury that can be maybe casted up, 
put them back out with a cast on for a little while and hope for the best. We're hoping it's nothing too major with the shoulder. I don't think it is because above the knee looks normal. Above the knee looks all right. I'm going to go ahead and walk away from him, maybe let him lay back down, let him chill out. We don't want him to injure himself even more. I guess herself. I think that's a heifer calf. But uh, I figured I would show you guys that calf. Just having a problem with its leg. Probably nothing too major, but I guess we don't know for sure. Um, we're going to have a vet come out and take a look and just give us a confirmation on what's going on. See what preventative measures we can do to help it recover. But uh, I'm going to wait till Scott gets back from spreading the manure. If you guys want to see what it looks like in the tractor when we're out in the field spreading manure, I put out a video I think in January or February around there called Spreading Manure where I was in that tractor with dad and we were out. There was snow on the ground. We went out and we spread manure out on the field in the wintertime. So if you want to see what it looks like in the tractor with all the flippers and everything working on the manure spreader, go check out that video. I think that's one of the most popular videos on the channel. So uh, it should be pretty easy to find if you guys want to see that perspective of unloading manure and getting it spread out onto the field. Uh, we're hoping our combine gets done today. Our combine's been down in the shop getting worked on, getting some new parts put on it. We're hoping it'll be done sometime today, sometime, I don't know. We're hoping to get started sometime this week with harvest, but it's, start, it's looking like we're going to have a kind of a rainy week. We're, we're expecting possibly some rain tonight and then some off and on chances throughout the week. So I don't know. Well guys, we're now loading up load number three in the manure spreader out of the big pile. Scott just left. I guess the dealer just called and said the combine is done, ready to go. So he's going to go down, get a ride down there and go grab the, our new combine, the S780. You guys have seen it a few videos ago when we first got it. But uh, so who knows, maybe we'll test it out tonight, do a little bit of harvesting. Who knows? But I wanted to kind of go and talk about what's in this cattle lot right now. We have our uh, we have our hay wagon with the hay in it for the cattle. That's normal. And of course we have our water, that's normal. And we have our feed bunk for the TMR feed, that's normal as well. But what we don't always have in here is this. This is what they call a creep feeder. And what a creep feeder is, is you can see the calves are actually showing you how it works as, we're, as I'm speaking. We got a couple calves coming out of this side pretty much what this is is when the calves get to a certain age but around this age where they can get in is when we are starting to wean the calves off and uh, the vet, what this does is these gates allow the calves to get in and get a special creep feed it allows them to just walk right through these bars that might be our youngest calf right here this brown one I really like how he or she looks looks like a bull calf I like how he looks, but this creep feeder, it's a special feed. You can see it's got some, I'll kind of get close. I can't get super close, but it looks like it's got some corn and some pellets and a whole bunch of stuff in there. Good stuff. And what it does is that is, you know, of course the stuff that the calves need. And what it does is uh, obviously it gives them an alternate, an alternative feed while they can still nurse off mom if they want. This is introducing them to feed and the thing about it is these gates make it so that the calves can go in there and get the creep feed, but the moms can't. The moms can't go in there and hog all the feed. Because if we just had it, if we just filled the feed bunks up with feed and we didn't have a creep feeder, the calves wouldn't even have a chance to get to the feed because the moms know what it is and the moms love it. And the, but the calves are like, what in the world is this? And you know, they're investigating it, they don't know, and then the moms push them away because it's a pecking order. And so the moms and the bulls will push the calves away. So what this creep feeder does is it makes, it separates the cows from the calves. The calves can get in there and be introduced to feed and get the nutrients that they need. And the cows and the, and the bulls and the bigger calves that can't fit in there anymore cannot push them away. They can go in and get as much feed as they'd like and they don't even have to worry about it. They don't have to worry about getting pushed around. They can get introduced to feed and eventually be, have them long enough on a creep feeder, they won't even nurse off mom anymore. And they will be completely weaned off and they will be, they'll be able to join in, we'll pull the creep feeder. 
So that's your vocabulary word of the day, creep feeder. That's what this guy is here. Like I said, it's a way for calves like this little guy to uh, get in. He was actually laying right in here for a little while. But it gives the calves a chance to go in and get feed so they can start weaning themselves off and be introduced to solid feeds and the moms can't go in and push them away. That's exactly the purpose of this. So they can eat and grow and wean off, wean themselves off mom and they won't get pushed away. Maybe this calf will show you how it's done. Go on in there little guy, there you go. See, he jumped right into the creep feeder and he's gonna go right up and get a snack. See, and he's in this nice little pen. He walked himself right in there. He's gonna take a couple nibbles out of the bunk there and he's just gonna have a little snack, you know? There's a little guy too. He can come up and eat if he wants. That's all that is. It's just a segregation pen that the calves can leave, come in and out of whenever they want. Whenever they want feed, they can come up and get feed just like the cows can. You know, they can walk up to the hay or they can walk up to the bunks if the bunks have feed. They can come up and get feed whenever they want. And the creep feeder allows the calves to be introduced to the same practices, except the cows cannot do the same thing in the creep feeder. They are segregated. They can't fit in there, of course. And then, like I said, the calves get a little older. We can pull the creep feed, and they can just jump right in and eat just with the cows. Eat off the hay, eat out, out of the bunks, and they'll do just fine. I figured I would uh, teach you guys a little bit about that. Um, Dad is out spreading load number three right now. You can see him up the road there, just getting to the field there. We're spreading out on the section of the cornfield where we've chopped. You can see... You can see where there's no corn out in the field. That's where we had the crew come out and shop for us for silage. But uh, all the rest of that corn, we will harvest with the regular combine and it'll just be regular kernel corn. And it'll go toward just being corn to go for cattle feed that way and go to elevators and stuff like that. But I figured I would teach you guys about creep feeders. Um, Give you a little bit of edumacation on cattle farming a little bit while i'm waiting for dad to come back and while we're waiting for manure to be hauled out of here but uh we're just going to keep on trucking here i don't know how many more loads uh, we're going to be able to do obviously when we run out of ground up there we run out of ground it's not like we have the whole field so whenever we run out of ground we'll stop you know we don't want to spread too much manure on one area you know, or because then, you know, there's too much nutrients and the, the crops may not grow there very well. You don't want too much nitrogen to mess up the dirt. There's a couple guys that have chicken manure and what they, they have a section of the field where they just pile it up out there and they can load their spreader and go out and spread it. But where they set it, you'll never grow a crop there again. There's so much nitrogen content that gets packed in that dirt. It's too much and the crop can't grow there. They can run the planter over it a million times and put as many seeds as they want in there. Not a single one will sprout in that little area. So that's why you want to spread at a nice even rate and you never want to double apply because you don't want to put too much. You want to be, you want to let that seed, you know, be able to grow. You don't want to overdo it. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on waiting it out guys and we'll see what happens. I figure while dad's still kind of on his way back I figured I'd give you guys another little cattle lesson. Just in case you don't know, I'm sure if you're watching this you probably know, but in case you don't, you know, everybody likes to learn and I like to teach, so I'll give you guys a lesson. Cows, also sheep, goats, they are the three big animals that we would call ruminants. And what ruminants are, are animals that have one stomach, but they have four chambers. A lot of people, kind of deep you know obviously a lot of people like to say that cows have four stomachs that's not actually true it's only one stomach but it's got four chambers so like i said cows have four chambers and they have one stomach but four chambers those chambers are called the, the big one the rumen then there's the reticulum then there's the omasum and then there's the abomasum there's four chambers in the cow's stomach and they all serve a different purpose in processing the feed and digestion. And because they're ruminants, you can see that like this cow here is eating, obviously eating hay, but those cows way over there, they're not eating anything. They're just chewing. 
They're not, there's no feed over there. But they're, but they're still eating. Because what they have to do is they swallow their feed and it goes into one of the chambers. I forget which one it goes in first. But they have to bring it back up is what we call cud. It comes back up and they have to chew it even further and process it more. And then they can swallow it again and it gets fully processed. So that's why you'll see goats, sheep, cows, even if they're not by feed, they're just standing around chewing. That's called chewing their cud and they are technically still eating. Well, the vet is here and we've already found the source of this calf's problems. I can't really show it now that we've shut this, but pretty much it looks like something just poked him in the foot down there. Maybe he just stepped on a wire and it caused a puncture and there's just some infection going on. So it's just gonna take some antibiotics and he should be good to go. Aren't you, buddy? You'll be good to go, buddy. You'll be good to go. So pretty good prognosis for this guy. Just some antibiotics to clear up the infection and he'll be good as new. All right, guys, I just got done bringing in some water for our injured calf. Pretty much doctor's orders are to, she recommended that we keep him inside this way, we are expecting some rain the next, you know, off and on the next couple days. So uh, there is already clearly, you know, there was already pus coming out of where that puncture wound was. So there is already drainage. And so she recommended that we leave him inside so that he can't get in the mud and clog up that hole so that that infection can just, it can just drain out. And he, he was given some antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories. So, he should be good to go. That should be all he needs, unless stuff doesn't heal up, but it's pretty good. It's looking really good. Should heal up nicely for this little guy. So I brought in some water for him, and we'll bring in some hay here once we're done spreading manure. But uh, yeah, it'll take a little while for that swelling to go down, and he'll start putting more and more weight on it, and that will help drain his uh, puncture wound in his foot. But it could have been a whole lot worse. It could have been, a, we thought it maybe was something wrong with his shoulder, but uh, I think I think for injuries, that's best case scenario. Mom is clearly calling to him. She's been doing that for quite a while now. Mom has been calling for him, so that's a good sign. We clearly know who his mom is. Who knows, maybe we'll let her in too. Who knows, we'll have to see. But prognosis looks good for this little guy. He'll be good to go. There's mom right there, number 55. What are you doing? You can see your baby right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these buckets back out. Cause dad's probably about ready to take another load of manure. Figured I'd give you guys the final update on that calf. He should be good to go. And I'd say guaranteed within the next week. Guaranteed, he should be back out in the lot. He'll be just fine. We're just gonna leave him inside, like I said, so that so the infection can clear itself up without getting re-aggravated or covered in mud. So we're gonna go ahead and keep on working. Well guys, I stole the skid loader for just a minute. I loaded up the bucket with some hay and I'm gonna take it to our calf. I figured the fastest way to do it would be to just bring it into him with the skid loader. While dad's dumping, he's not using this anyway. So I'll drive it right into the barn, bring it to our calf, bring it to our friend. Okay, easy now. Nice and slow. We'll bring it right to our friend. He's already poking his head out waiting for me. He knows what's up. I can't really dump it over. Look at that, he's trying to reach it already. Bring it down just a little bit. I'll shut this off in here. And we'll go out and we'll get this to our buddy, Calf here. Just like 
like that, he's got food. He, he's a happy boy. He's got plenty to eat there. Dad just took off with another load. I figured I'd come in and check on the calf just again. And I found out it's a she. I just happened to notice that she was using the bathroom and it was obvious that, oh, okay, this is, a, this is a heifer. So this is a heifer calf and look at her. She's just been chowing down. She's already got a little rivet in the hay there where she's been eating and she's chewing and she's doing a good job. She's doing good. She's got food, she's got water. She's got all the medicine she needs. She just got a little shot of antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories. And the doctor said that's all she needs. And she'll be good to go. I'll let you eat. All right, guys. It's now Thursday, September 21st. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon. I just got off work, and I came out to the shop because today is a big day. We've... We, We've had some rain come in the past few days. Of course, when it's that time of year when we want to start getting started with harvest, it's got to rain on us. But it has dried out just enough. There's still some mud around, but it's dried up enough that we are harvesting today. Today is officially first day of harvest 2023. We've got the small grain cart on the 47 sitting out here full of corn i just seen the black truck go by leaving the shop must be headed to the elevator or to the bin site i guess is where they're going they're going to the dryer bin site down by the hog barn so we've got the 47 with the small cart on and jonesy must be out somewhere with the 8320 with the big cart the 8320 being our new tractor to the farm this year and scott must be out with the new combine, the S780. My dad's semi is not here either, so he must be unloading it on his way. But you can see where I've done the, where I did the crop update in previous videos. You can see all that is chopped now. All that is cut. That's where it's been harvested. It looks like the little cart is currently full. Don't know where Tom is. Don't know what he's running, but I'm gonna jump in something. I'm going to meet up with the guys, see what we're doing, but it's the first day of harvest, guys. Harvest 2023 is officially here. I'm excited. Let's see what we can get into. I guess I'll give you guys a crop update. Probably shouldn't need a crop update since we're currently harvesting it, but you can see I showed you guys the field around our place at home, but some of it's still green and then some of it's yellow. We pretty much have that case here. You can see some green in here. You can see some green in here. I'll zoom in on it so you can kind of see the color difference. Um, that's just showing that it's still not quite, you know, the moisture is still high in it. And that is why we are taking all of our stuff to the dryer site. Because pretty much why we take it to a dryer is because if the moisture is too high, an elevator will not take it. So, um, a lot of farmers have dryers, and you can take it to a dryer. And I showed you guys in depth how the dryer worked last year. If you guys do want to go check that out. But um, pretty much the dryer dries the corn, brings it down to a certain moisture so that it is sellable at the elevator. Because if you take in uh, high moisture corn, either they will deny it because when they probe you they test for moisture and damage and all that so if it's too moist they might flat out deny you and say we're not going to take this corn or or if they do accept the corn they're going to dock you they're going to charge you for it and they won't pay as much for the corn upon arrival so it's always good that we make it nice and dry so we use our dryer as much as we possibly can to get it going I'm noticing now too that the Kenworth is also gone on the hopper. So we've got both belt trailers going and we've got the Kenworth going. So I'm wondering who's running the Kenworth and I wonder who's been running this thing. Because this thing's full of corn and there's no operator. I might hop in it and turn on the radio just so I can see who's bantering, who's talking, what the game plan is. Who knows? I might just run this thing tonight. Who knows? I'll hop in it. I won't turn it on or nothing. I'll just I'll push the tar button on the radio if it's not already on, and we'll see what's going on. Yeah, I got the radio off in this thing right now. 
I'll just fire it up and we'll see what's going on. Well guys, Dad and Miss Sadie Dog just got back from the bin site with the peat. Uh, Dad just hopped in. He's putting out the auger on the 47 with the small grain cart. I still haven't seen the big one or the little or the or the combine yet. But we're gonna get our first dump off of this bad boy out of the little cart. This will probably fill us about halfway. About two, three dumps off the little cart fills a truck. One and a half or so fills from the big one. So here comes the 47 with the little cart. Dad's already got the auger out. He's gonna be swinging by us here. You can see he's got the auger in just a little bit so we can get over the exhaust pipes and then he will fold it all the way out once he's passed. You can see he's folding it out. And then I'll kind of put it over. I can't really see. But what he'll do is he will engage. He's gonna get a little further away here. He was a little close on that approach. He's gonna back her up just a hair, get her back to the front of the trailer, start filling the first hole. He'll engage the PTO once he's ready, and that will kick on the auger to start dumping out the corn. But this is the first dump that I've been here for Harvest 2023. What do you think, Sadie Dog? Do you like Harvest? There he goes, he kicked on the PTO. You really can't see it with this grain cart. You can hear it going. It's dumping corn, he's gonna readjust a little bit and he'll get it dumped in. Dad's still dumping, but look who's here. <laughs> Old Jonesy with the 8320 and the big cart. <laughs> he's gonna get in line and dump right behind dad here. There's the big boy. The new tractor with the cart on. Woohoo!
All right, guys, it's about 7.30. I'm in the small cart here. I'm gonna let things warm up. Fire the baby up. Pretty much we had some trouble at the dryer, so we are gonna shut down. Jonesy is full on the big cart there. The little cart is full, but they said they gotta do some work on this. So they're gonna put it in the shop. Turn the, turn the headlights on. But the combine's got some in it. The big cart is unloading into the black peat right now. I'm gonna take this up to the shop. So clutch. I'll put it in about seven or eight. On a full load of corn right here. I'm just gonna take it up, load it with corn up to the shop. Well, I don't know what you're doing there, Tom. Take this little cart up to the shop so they can work on it tomorrow. They had some trouble down at the dryer. The Kenworth is down there and my dad's semi is down there with corn on them. So we are gonna shut down for tonight. Speed up just a little bit here. But I'm gonna take the 47 and the small cart up to the shop and we are gonna shut down First day of harvest, they didn't get started until about two o'clock this afternoon. So as long as it doesn't rain tomorrow, they've been calling for chances of rain for a while. So who knows what tomorrow's gonna bring? We'll have to see. Put in the clutch. Let's put her in gear here. We're gonna pull her in the shop. Scott's gonna go down and probably get dad. I think, I don't know. But I'm gonna pull this thing right into the light, into the shop, and shut her down. I'm gonna kinda of pull her in, kinda of to the side here. Alrighty. I think we're clear of the door. Oh yeah, we're clear. I was gonna pull it in here. Just like that. We're in the shop. All right guys, it's now Friday the 22nd. I thought maybe we were gonna get rained out because we got some rain today, but look what's going on. There's the grain cart, the big one. Coming up to the Kenworth is sitting back there right now. Looks like they got quite a bit done in this field today while I was at work. So maybe they're about done with this field, maybe. And it'll be time to, maybe we'll be moving some equipment tonight. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Look at like there's quite a bit, I don't know. Maybe that's not our corn. All we can do is go out and see what's going on. So I rode down in the Kenworth. We're here at the dryer site. We're unloading the truck, now the belt. You guys have seen this process before. It goes out of the truck, in the pit, up the auger, up the wet bin. Then it comes down the bottom, up the auger, into the dryer, and into the dry bin. Well, the wet bin is pretty much full here. We still got about half a load on the black truck over there. And we got a full load on the Kenworth. So pretty much all we can do is fill this bin up and shut everything down and let the dryer do its thing. Let it start sucking corn out of this, drying it and putting it in the dryer and then we can keep dumping. That's all we can do. Well guys, we got the black peat unloaded. 
and we got it back to the shop. I grabbed Dad's pickup and brought it back. Dad showed up with his Pete and Zadie dog. Zadie dog, what are you doing? And unfortunately, we are just sitting here. Because like I showed you guys, the wet bin was pretty full. So we have to pretty much just sit and wait for the wet bin to empty out, go into the dryer and into the dry bin before we can start dumping more corn in from the trucks. So it's probably gonna be end up all three trucks are gonna be sitting down here. But, uh, so probably not much field action tonight. By the sounds of it, we're gonna be shutting down here because or everything, everything's gonna come to a halt because with no trucks, we can't dump, we can't empty the grain cart, which means we can't empty the combine. So if the trucks are held up, everybody's held up. So it doesn't sound like there's gonna be much field action. It does take a while for this uh, wet bin to empty. So we'll have to see what goes on. Um, tomorrow, I'm taking the day off. I have some family, I have a family event to go to in the afternoon, but we're expecting rain. We keep, they keep calling for rain every day. So who knows, I starting out harvest, it's kind of rocky, you know, with rain here, rain there. So who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. So we'll have to see, but I'm gonna keep you guys along with us. All right, everybody, good morning. It is Saturday, September 23rd. It's about nine o'clock in the morning right now. Restart. All right, everybody, good morning. It's now Saturday, September 23rd. It's about nine o'clock, about 10 till nine in the morning now. I'm down here at the dryer site next to our hog barn, which is right there. Um, we are here today because first of all, we're gonna try to get back out in the field, uh, looking at uh, looking at the forecast. We, they were calling for rain, but it looks really, really isolated, really, really spotty. And if anything is gonna hit us, it looks like it's gonna be very, very light, very, very quick. So even if it does rain and it shuts us down for maybe a half hour, we'll be able to go back out. But um, I told you guys yesterday that I was taking today off because I had a family event going on. We had a birthday party going on in the family for my cousin's kids but uh, when I woke up this morning I seen a message on the on the event page that they made pretty much saying that one of the kids has a stomach bug and uh, they have to postpone the party so I thought well I've already got the day off I might as well come out here and help out on the farm so uh, I drove the 7410 down here this morning and we pulled this great because we had a problem with this auger last night. We were dumping the back hopper of the Kenworth and I had just grabbed the broom there and I was starting to sweep the pit and we heard a bang, we heard a pop. We heard something break. And the auger started shaking like it was emptied out, which it was, and all of a sudden we had a pile growing on the pit. And so we shut everything, I shut everything down, I shut the 2940 down, got it all shut down, and we came to the conclusion that, uh, I'll zoom in on it, on our auger, you can see, I hope I can see it, the sun's kind of shining, but there is a, I might be able to put an arrow in editing here, but there is a, there's a bolt hole right at where those two augers meet that uh, there's clearly supposed to be a bolt there and it snapped. So the auger that's down here inside the actual pit is not turning. That bolt is broke, so it's not linking the two augers together to cause the rotation which caused the pile up and the emptying of the auger. So, uh, we, we brought the 7410 down and we pulled, we pulled the grate and dad just took off to go to town to grab some bolts. And we're gonna go ahead and there's another bolt in there on the junction. We're gonna replace that bolt too. That bolt's fine, but it'll be our luck if we just replace the broken one, the other one's gonna snap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna get a hardened bolt, a grade eight bolt, one that's tougher. Instead of a grade five, we're gonna grab a grade eight bolt that's stronger, more durable, and we're gonna replace those bolts. And we're just gonna replace them all, replace them both, so that we don't have to worry about it and we can get things going. This Pete here, my dad's Pete, is full of corn. So it'll be the first to dump. And the other two trucks, the Black Pete and the Kenworth, are also full of corn right now. And there's still quite a bit of corn in the big grain cart too. So what we're gonna try to do is uh, we're gonna get this auger running. We're gonna make sure everything works. We'll pull the peat up here. 
we'll start dumping the peat out and then we can finally start getting back into the swing of things we can start bringing trucks down and we can start emptying out and then we will jump across the creek we got the big section done on the uh on the north side done we have to jump across the creek and go a little further south to the south section across the creek in that field and we'll start chopping the corn there so we're done with one big section and we got to jump to the next but the combine cannot move until the trucks are empty because if the trucks are held up everything's held up so we're going to get this auger fixed and once we get the auger running once we get the auger running and it's fixed and we get this grate put back on i'm going to snag the 7410 and i'm going to take it home with me i'm going to take it back to the house and put out a couple hay bales for the horses and it, it'll take a while to unload these trucks anyway so me going home real quick it'll take me a little while to get home because i'm in a slow tractor but i'll get home i'll put two hay bales out open them up put the rings around them for the horses to munch on and uh, bring the tractor back and then i will jump in and we will get going on whatever field action we are having today i didn't expect to get much farming action today because i like i said i was going to be going to a birthday party with the family but since that got postponed i figured you know what i already got the day off let's go farming so we're here we're gonna have a three-day farming weekend uh tomorrow the rain looks a little bit more likely so i don't know how much we're gonna be able to do tomorrow but Monday looks clear, so as long as it dries up nice from what rain we get Sunday, we should be running, but you never know. This time of year, or I guess any time of year for farming, it's all dependent on the weather. You never know what Mother Nature's gonna throw at you. So I'm gonna wait here until they get back with those bolts. There should be a quick zip, 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 put those bolts in, and we'll fire the auger up. We'll get it going. We'll make sure everything's working. We'll make sure all the auger components are spinning. And in theory, I should suck this big old pile of corn down and send it up. And then we will uh, start dumping trucks. I figured while I'm waiting on them to come back with those bolts, I would do a little, I, I tried to explain it a little bit yesterday when we were down here, but it was loud. So while it's kind of quiet, I will uh, explain the dryer setup in case you haven't seen a dryer before or you didn't watch last year's videos. But this is our dryer site. This right here is our dryer. And what it does is, of course, it dries the corn. Because you can't have your corn too moist. You know, you gotta have it just right. You, can't, you don't want a lot of moisture. So, as of late, this whole field, as we've been pulling corn out of the field, moisture's been testing about 21, a little over 21, 21 and a half average-ish would be our moisture. And so we bring it down here, we bring it in, you've seen it, get dumped off the, on the from the combine to the cart to the cart to the truck the truck brings it here we dump it in this pit it goes up the auger into our wet bin that's where all the wet corn goes from the field and then there's an automated system as long as you switch it on from our little shack there it'll kick on and it'll start it'll automatically kick on the unload down at the bottom of this bin and it'll start dumping wet corn out it'll bring it up this little auger and into the dryer and the dryer will dry it and we've been testing it once it comes out of the dryer down here at the bottom we, the moisture is down to about 17 a little over 17 so it's been bringing it down quite a bit it'll dry it in there it gets hot it dries it and then once it comes out of the dryer it goes up the longer auger and into our big dry bin and then from there we have an unload auger on the other side of the of the bin there and we can load the trucks back up with the dry corn whenever we are ready to take it to an elevator or to the other bins if we need to or anything like that so that's kind of how the dryer works and it's an automated system like i said so if we're pumping loads in eventually this wet bin is going to get full like i showed you yesterday and i'm probably going to go up and check and see where we're at on this wet bin so it gets to a point like where we were last night where you kind of just have to sit and wait for the system to do its thing let it empty this bin out a little bit so we can fit another truckload so I'll climb up the bin here for you. It will take a peek and see where we're sitting in this wet bin. Oh, wow. Ooh, I can pretty much see the bottom in there. Awesome. We've been letting it run overnight. You can see it's coned out down there. That's what they call coning out. And you can see the, uh, the, the auger down in there. Which, that's awesome. That's plenty of room. 
we can start pumping loads into it as soon as we get the system running, which is awesome. That means nothing went wrong with the belts or any other augers that caused that system to run. It did its thing and we could keep on trucking, which is awesome. All right, guys, it's now 12.15. Um, I just got back here to the shop. We got the auger up and running. We got those two bolts replaced. So the auger down at the bin site is running once again. And then I took the 7410, I took it all the way home, put a couple hay bales out for the horses, opened them up so the horses could start munching on them. And then I brought the loader tractor. I just got back to the shop a couple minutes ago and Jonesy was dumping the big cart, a little bit of the big cart onto this truck. Dad's Pete here. And then our buddy Cam, He's the guy who's been filming a lot of the races for you guys for us. He is running the small cart right now, the 4760, and he just dumped. This truck is going to hold a little bit more, but uh, Dad just took the Black Pete down to the bin site, and the Kenworth is currently dumping down there. So we are back in action. We are up and running once again. It's a beautiful day. It's nice and windy, keeping the corn nice and dry, as dry as can be anyway some clouds in the sky but not bad not bad we're gonna i think it's gonna be a good day for field work but uh i'm taking sadie out for a quick little walk but once uh jonesy comes up with the big car i'll put her away so she's out of the way and then i will hop in with him and go for a ride in the field give you guys some grain cart footage today maybe i'll get jonesy talked into letting me drive the 8320 i pretty much already know how to drive it just from riding with him that one day it's even easier than the 8270. Way easier. But uh, the little cart is just going up the hill here. They said they had about 10 acres or so left back here on this main patch. And then we'll jump across the creek and do that back part of the field, that section. But it's a good day. Yeah, I was planning on going to a family event today. But uh, things happened. And uh, it, it turned out that I'm here for a nice day in the field. So I can't complain about that. Don't know how it's going to work tomorrow with the rain coming. Who knows? We'll have to see. Like I said, Mother Nature determines everything. But I'm going to go ahead and just wait until the big cart shows up and I'll see what happens. Well, I hopped in Dad's Pete. I ended up riding with Dad down and dumping in the wet bin. And we just got back and the combine, something on the combines broke. So we're going to see what's up. So. I'll show you guys what's going on with the combine. It's on the combine right here. This is what we call the drive chain. And what happened was we lost a sprocket and the idler pulley and it busted uh, one of the links on the chain. So the chain is broke. Uh, the boss already went on a parts run. He's, he just left and is headed down to get the parts that we need. So uh, we should be getting up and running here in the next couple hours we should be able to get going but this would be kind of nice give us a good buffer to let the wet bin empty the dry bins about full too so we're gonna have to start figuring out where we're gonna take the corn but this will give us a good buffer we're giving we're getting a quick little get a, getting a good little break here and we'll see what happens here all right it's now 410 we just got done putting this whole new sprocket on in here all new sprocket, put new links on the chain. So we're gonna give her a try, see how she does.
All right, guys, it is 520. We are bringing the carts up, dumping off onto the trucks. Dad's truck's full, the Kenworth is full, the black truck's gonna be full. And I think we are gonna be shutting down. Uh, we got the main patch done. We got all the acres on the main patch done. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to find a way to empty that dry bin. We're gonna have to start hauling some dry corn, empty out the dry bin, so that we can start the process over and we can keep filling the wet bin. But uh, I think that's gonna do it for today. Who knows? We'll have to see what happens here. But we're pretty much done harvesting for the day. All right, guys, it's now about 6.45. Uh, we've been done for a while, uh, pretty much the last clip there when I told you guys we were shutting down. We went into the shop after that and we're goofing off and uh, we, were just, we were just goofing off, just talking, chatting for a while. But tomorrow we are not going to be in the field. We've already uh, said that we are not going to do the field work tomorrow because there are, there's chances of rain and as you can see, you might not be able to see it, but behind me looks awful guilty down to the south but uh, definitely dark and pouring down there to the south but uh, tomorrow we are not going to be in the field I'm probably still going to come out to the shop though and uh, just chill out Jonesy's going to come out I think he's going to sweep out the 8320 you know just do something little get us out of the house you know do some little stuff do some cleanup because it does get to a point where if we're just go 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 when we neglect, you know, cleaning the equipment, it gets to be a, gets to be kind of messy. So, on a rain day, we like to uh, clean the equipment if we can, and uh, or reorganize things because it gets to a point where we move stuff around and then we lose things in a moment of stress when we need it and we don't remember where we put it. So on a rainy day, we like to still come out and reorganize things, clean things up just so that if we get into a breakdown situation and we need to find our tools, they're where they're supposed to be and we don't have to go running around for tools, driving around for tools, whatever. We have exactly what we need when we need it. So we like to do that on rain days. So we'll probably do a little bit of that tomorrow. I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here, guys. Celebrating the first couple days of Harvest 2023. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to go grab a bite to eat for supper and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to sit down and edit because I have to edit this video and I still haven't even touched the last video where we raced at Nationals. I'm a little behind. So I'm going to get home and do some editing for you guys so you guys can actually see these videos. But I uh, hope you guys did enjoy watching the first couple days of Harvest 23. If you guys did, make sure you guys smash the like button on this video. Spread the word of the channel, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.